What is up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Hope y'all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be doing another update to the Virginia Roberts versus Prince Andrew case. And the update is that Judge Kaplan has approved of the letters rogatory, the international request for depositions that both sides have asked for. OK, so if you watch my videos, my previous videos on this subject last month, then you will know that Prince Andrew's side and Virginia Roberts side has requested for certain people in the UK and in Australia to be deposed in this case. OK, so Prince Andrew's side wanted Robert Giffray and Dr. Lightfoot to be deposed. Dr. Lightfoot was Virginia Roberts psychologist. Robert Robert Giffray is Virginia Roberts' husband, okay? Uh, and uh, and the Virginia Roberts side wanted um, Robert Olney and uh, Shukri Walker to be deposed. Shukri Walker was a civilian who saw Prince Andrew. She says she saw Prince Andrew and Virginia Roberts in a nightclub, in the Tramp nightclub in London, and Robert Olney was a former assistant to Prince Andrew. Okay, so those are the four people that both sides want to depose. And, and um, the letters, like letters rogatory have been sent out. Those are the letters requesting a, a national court in America, asking the authorities in the UK and also in Australia, the central judicial authorities there to allow for these depositions to take place. Okay, so I find this surprising that this happened so quickly because, like I mentioned in my last video, I thought that both sides would oppose each other's requests because some of these, uh, the, the Prince Andrew requests definitely violate some testimonial privileges like the spousal privilege and also the doctor a patient confidentiality pr privilege. So I, I figured that Virginia Roberts lawyers would try to block these letters rogatory, but for some reason they didn't do that. They didn't file any motions. I'm surprised by that. So we'll talk about that at the end. But first, let's look at what we're talking about here. So these, so this is the first request. Uh, this is the request that was, this is, this has been signed off by Judge Kaplan right here. Okay. So this was the request by the Virginia Roberts side to have Robert Olney deposed in relation to this case. So Robert Ashton Olney, uh, located in this, uh, this, uh, address in the UK in, uh, in England. And, um, this is this will be delivered to the court by Sri Guru McCauley. Their representative in London is David Hunt. But basically, um, the American court, is the court in New York, the district court in New York, is asking the senior master of the Queen's Bench Division to facilitate this request under the Hague Convention and also the Evidence Act of 1975 and uh, other international treaties and agreements that we have. So th it's a basic uh, concept for both of these. So this one is the... Uh, this one is the request for deposition of Robert Olney. And uh, we already talked about what the questions they want to ask him it, ask him are. And they have to do with um, uh, Prince Andrew's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, obviously, and Gillian Maxwell, and any communications with uh, Jeffrey Epstein and the plaintiff, and also any communications with or regarding Gillian Maxwell, any communications with regarding uh, the plaintiff. Um, and defendants travel records from New York, uh, to one of the locations, which the plaintiff alleges, uh, where she was abused and the defendants travel to or from any of Jeffrey Epstein's home. So these are the things that they're asking for. Um, like I said before, I thought that the Prince Andrew lawyers would oppose this because they, they're asking for any communication that's very broad. So I always talk about how things have to be specific. So I thought for sure that Prince Andrew's side would file a motion saying that these requests are too broad, but they didn't do that. So I, I don't know why they haven't done that. Uh, the Virginia Roberts side didn't do that either. So they have some, they probably have some uh, plan. Both sides probably have some plan. They probably think that Robert only is his testimony is not relevant or he doesn't they don't think that it's going to be incriminating there's some reason why they're not opposing this because if i was the lawyer for for uh, prince andrew i would say that any communications is very broad okay and you have to be more specific than that like like a time time frame or type of type of communication something like that right so that's very suspicious that they don't oppose this there there might be some reason that i'm not seeing here but um but they didn't oppose it okay so this has been approved by the judge and now it's going to uh the authorities in the uk and uh they will be conducting the uh the deposition on april 29th of 2022 as you guys you guys can see here so from a couple months from now and that's that okay next same same exact thing uh same language 
Same people involved, Sigurd McCauley and her law firm are asking for Shokri Walker to be deposed in this matter because she claims that she saw Prince Andrew and Regina Roberts dancing at the Tramp uh, nightclub in London. So that's what they're going to ask her about. And uh, that's basically it. I already summarized this in my last video when I talked about what they're going to ask her. And the, uh, the deposition is set for April 29th, just like the other one. And so that's that. OK, so those are the two people that Virginia Roberts side, the first two people that the that the uh, Virginia Roberts side wants to depose. And those have been approved by the judge. So with that being said, let's get to the two people that Prince Andrew wants to depose. Right. And those two people, as we discussed in our last video, are Dr. Lightfoot and also Robert Giffray. So first, Robert Giffray. So. Judge Kaplan has signed off on this, uh, just like with the other two. Andrew Brettler is the one who's going to be facilitating uh, this. And uh, they're asking the uh, attorney general, I believe. Yes, the secretary to the attorney general's department of the Commonwealth of Australia and appropriate judicial authorities under the Hague Convention and other uh, treaties. They're asking for these uh, letters rogatory to be to be uh, facilitated for these depositions to take place through the uh, central to through the attorney general's office in Australia. The sender is um, Lewis Kaplan and the receiver is the central authority of the requested state, which is Australia. And Andrew Brettler is the one who's facilitating the communications and documents between the two courts. And Andrew Brettler is asking for the deposition of Robert Giffray and for him to be asked about certain um, communications that he had with uh, Virginia Roberts and to ask him about the relationship between uh, Virginia Roberts and Epstein and Maxwell and uh, all the claims that she has made against Prince Andrew and household finances and a whole bunch of other stuff like this. So this is where I thought that uh, that Virginia Roberts side would oppose this because Prince Andrew's side is asking for some private communications between husband and wife. And as I mentioned in my last video, this is one of the testimonial privileges, one of the first testimonial pr privileges um, that were afforded to people. And the most important testimonial privilege is the uh, uh, the spousal privilege. Basically, if you're married, if the marriage is, marriage is valid, then a lot of private communications, with some small exceptions, are protected by the uh, spousal privilege. That means that the courts nor the government can't in can interfere with the uh, uh, communications, private communications between husband and wife, or between wife and wife, whatever the partners are. Um, the spousal privilege is pretty sacred in Western civilization. For the most part, the court does not pry into marriage, marital affairs of people unless there's a crime going on, unless there's some other uh, public interest uh, at hand. But other than that, they don't pry into it. So I'm very surprised that Virginia Roberts side did not oppose this because some of this information could be considered protected under the spousal privilege. But nevertheless, they didn't oppose it. So most likely because if I, if I had to guess, the reason is because they know that Robert Giffray is not going to divulge any information about Virginia Roberts that might be uh, damaging or that might just be private, right? Private information that the court does not or the public does not have a right to know. So Robert Giffray probably has a lawyer himself. So so I'm guessing the reason they didn't oppose this is because they know that Robert Giffray is not going to give out give any private information that's protected to the people who are taking the deposition in Australia. Right. That's the only conclusion I can come to. Um, but who knows? I don't know why Virginia Roberts side didn't oppose this, because this is a like I, I, I definitely thought that there will be a motion opposing this letter letter rogatory for Robert Giffray, uh, citing the uh, spousal privilege, saying that Robert Giffray cannot give testimony that was private between Virginia Roberts and himself. They were married for, I believe, more than a decade now. So. Yeah. So some of this is definitely protected under that privilege. So I don't know what the laws in Australia are, but I'm sure there's a law to protect that privilege because Australia is based on um, uh, Anglo-Saxon jurisprudence as well, because Australia used to be a colony or a prison colony of Britain or something. I'm not sure about the history of Australia, so I apologize. Uh, I know a lot of British history and American history, but I do not know Australian history. Um, 
Anyways, let's get to Dr. Lightfoot now. So this is another privilege that they're trying to break. So it's the same thing. This person is also in Australia. So it's these uh, the attorney general's office that they're asking for in Australia to facilitate this uh, deposition for them. And the person that's being deposed here is Dr. Judith Lightfoot, who was the uh, psychologist or psychotherapist for Virginia Roberts back in the day when this stuff was going on, when this after this stuff happened and she went to a psychologist. And this is another privilege that they want to pierce, which is doctor-patient privilege, which is another very sacred privilege in the West, where if it, with the stuff that you talk about with your psychologist cannot be divulged uh, by that psychologist without the permission of the patient, okay? Even death does not dissolve the privilege between doctor and patient. That means even if Virginia Roberts dies, Dr. Lightfoot has an obligation to her to protect her private information that she discussed with her psychologist. This is the kind of privileges that the law affords uh, in our country and also I'm, I'm probably sure in Britain as well, uh, but definitely in America under American law, and I'm sure that Australia has similar rules. Uh, but nevertheless, they're asking for Dr. Lightfoot's diagnosis of Virginia Roberts, nature and consequences of plaintiff's alleged trauma, childhood trauma and abuse, matters discussed during Dr. Lightfoot's sessions with plaintiffs. So this is all private information, definitely protected by the doctor-patient confidentiality privilege. But nevertheless, they're asking for it. So I, I thought for sure, 100%, that Virginia Roberts side would oppose this, right? But they didn't. So that means that they probably know that Dr. Lightfoot is not going to give out any privileged information to the person taking the deposition. That's my only conclusion I can draw, right? Because, because this is insane. They're asking for privileged information. Unless Virginia Roberts has given them permission, given Dr. Lightfoot per permission to answer these questions, to get her records, Doctor, they want Dr. Lightfoot's notes and uh, from all sessions with the plaintiff, Virginia Roberts, prescriptions issued to uh, to plaintiff by Dr. Lightfoot, copies of all invoices issued by Dr. Lightfoot to plaintiff and or her representatives, and medical treatment records and services rendered by Dr. Lightfoot. All of this stuff is protected by the doctor-patient confidentiality privilege. So that's why I was, I was like 100% sure that they would oppose this. But the only reason that I can think of that they're not opposing is because they know that Dr. Lightfoot is not going to give any of this stuff over to the people in Australia who are going to be doing this deposition, right? Because this is all protected information, at least under American law, okay? So unless, unless I'm missing something here, they know that these people will not give any privileged information. They shouldn't. Dr. Lightfoot can be sued by Virginia Roberts if Dr. Lightfoot breaks Virginia Roberts' confidentiality. Okay? She can be sued for millions of dollars by Virginia Roberts if Dr. Lightfoot breaks privilege. Okay? So these are very important things. That's why I focus on this. These testimonial privileges are very important in American law. You can't pierce spousal privilege without a very good reason, and you definitely cannot pierce doctor-patient confidentiality without a very, very good reason, like the crime uh, fraud exception. If there's a crime going on and a, and a doctor knows about it that their patient is doing, they can report it to the cops. Short of that, it's very, very rare for a doctor to break confidentiality because the doctor can be sued civilly. There's civil liability for the doctor if she breaks the privilege, okay? So I'm guessing that Sigrid McCauley and Virginia Roberts lawyers know that. Of course they know that. And that's probably why they haven't opposed these uh, letters rogatory for these depositions because they know that Dr. Lightfoot will not uh, break Virginia Roberts' privilege. That's the only conclusion I can come to, okay? I'm very surprised here. Because I thought for sure that they that both sides would file motions to keep the other side from doing these depositions. There might be some international thing that I don't know about because if this happened in America, there would definitely be motions filed to suppress or, or to stop these depositions from happening. But this is an international thing, so there might be some international laws that I'm not fair, uh, that, that I'm not aware of because I'm not an expert in international law. Uh, I mainly know about criminal law in America and American law and state law in New York and California. So my knowledge is not, my expertise is not in international law. So there might be some things that I'm ignorant about, but I'm going to look into this. There, there's there's going to be a good reason why they didn't oppose this, right? The, the lawyers definitely have a plan, so I'm sure there's an explanation here that's going to make sense. Um, but right now, it's not that clear what their plans are. Um, but that's what's happening right now. And with that being said, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, and press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below.
and uh, you can support the show for just one dollar a month and uh, you get a lot of extra content there as well as access to these legal documents that i show you guys you can download the documents and read them for yourself on patreon and i and you can watch videos without any ads and you can contact me directly if you have any questions those are some of the perks i provide for my patrons and i appreciate all the people who are supporting me right now with that being said i'll see you guys next time as always peace Thank <laughs> you.